can we talk about some candidates, the ones we got and possible alternatives? So one question I have is why do we have within this system, why do we have the candidates we have? Is It seems, um, maybe you can correct me, highly unsatisfactory. Like the, like, is anyone actually excited about our current candidates? I'm kind of excited because no matter who wins the election, it's gonna be hilarious. So that is something that I'm excited about. But from a from a humor perspective. Yeah. Is, I, that, is that what the whole system is? So that's one theory of the case is the entire thing is optimized for viewership. Yeah. And uh, excitement by definitions of like the reality show kind of excitement. I think it is, if you look at what happened with Brett Kavanaugh, this is not a career that would draw people who are, you might say, quality. Because no matter who they are, there would be a huge incentive from the other team to denigrate them and humiliate them in the worst possible ways. Because as the two teams lose their legitimacy among gen pop, it's gonna get harder and harder for them to maintain any kind of claims to authority, which is something I like, but which does kind of play out in you know certain nefarious ways. So people, the best of the best are not gonna to wanna to be politicians. Yeah, because like, I could have a job where I have a job interview and I'm running Yahoo or whatever, or I could for 18 months have to eat you know corn dogs looking like I'm going down on someone and shake hands and have all this, my family and on social media daily to call the worst things for what? And then I'm still not guaranteed the position. But the flip side of that, like from my perspective is the competition is weak. Meaning like you need a certain, a minimum amount of eloquence clearly that I don't, uh, the bar which I did not pass. I don't think either of them would be considered particularly eloquent, Biden or Trump. No, I know, but yeah. I was, that's what I'm saying. The competition, like if if you were, um, wanted to be become a politician, if you wanted to run for president, the opportunity is there. Like if you were at all competent. Like if you had, so like Andrew Yang is an example of somebody who has a bunch of ideas, is somewhat uh, eloquent, like young, energetic. It feels like there should be thousands of Andrew Yangs like that would enter the domain. And he went nowhere. Well, he, well, I, I wouldn't say he went nowhere. He generated quite a bit of excitement. He just didn't go very far. That's okay. You don't have to run for president to generate excitement with your ideas. You could be a podcast host. I'm not even joking. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. And he's both, Andrew Yang. Oh, he's a podcast? Yeah, he has a podcast called Yang Speaks. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The music of the way you said, uh, <laughs> yeah, cool, is the way my mom talks to me when I tell her something exciting going on in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice, honey. Oh, you made a robot. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes coffee. Okay. Oh, you're still single, though, aren't you? <laughs> huh, I wonder why. I wonder why. You make yourself a robot wife? <laughs> Give me some robot grandchildren. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, for, first of all, okay, let me ask you about Andrew Yang because he represents fresh energy you don't find him fresh or energetic you know like is there any candidate you wish was um in the mix that was in the mix you wish was one of the last two remaining yeah people like marion williamson i thought was great uh tulsi i thought was great amy klobuchar got a bad rap uh, i think she held her own um smart she wasn't particularly funny that's okay i think she was non-threatening to a lot of people what did you like about them I guess I just named all women. That's interesting. It wasn't even intentional. Um, Tulsi, I like that she was aggressive, has a good resume, and is not um, staying the course for the establishment. Marion Williamson, I like because she comes from a place, from what it seems, of genuine compassion. Maybe she's a sociopath. I don't know. I read her book, and it actually affected me profoundly because it's very rare when you read a book and there's even that one idea that blows your mind and that you kind of think about all the time. And there was one of that such idea in her book about, um, she was teaching something called A Course in Miracles in Hollywood. I think she still teaches it. And this was during the 80s, the high the AIDS crisis. And all these young men in the prime of their life were dropping like flies. 
And she's trying to give them hope. Well, good luck. They're dying. No one cares. And they're like, you can't tell us that they're going to cure this. Like, you're, you're that's a lie. And she goes, what if I told you they're not going to cure it? What if I told you it's going to be to like diabetes? They cut off your foot and you're going to go blind. Would that be something that you can hope for? And when you put it like that, it's like, yeah. Like if you're talking to someone who's like a homeless junkie and you're like, you could be a doctor, you're a lawyer or a lawyer, like cool story. Like you could have a studio apartment with a terrible roommate and a shitty job. But when you're on the street, you know, cooking breakfast in a teaspoon and you hear that, you're like, wait, would that really be so bad? Is that really so much worse than this? No. And it becomes something. So when she put it in those terms, I'm like, wow, this woman that really did a number on me in terms of teaching people how to be hopeful. Small steps, but it's but it's also then it becomes less of I need a miracle to be right. like oh this is really manageable it's yeah it's it's and it's absurd to think it's impossible. What about what's your take on Unity Twenty Twenty that Brett Weinstein uh, pushed forward? It, it, I, I it was DOA. Uh, he couldn't even stand up to Twitter. Dead let, on arrival. Dead on arrival. He couldn't even stand up to Twitter, let alone or to Facebook. They got blocked. Let alone to the. Well, isn't that hugely problematic? By the way, that Twitter would block that. No, not at all. Um, I don't know why they blocked it, but I believe I don't know. What problematic means that's a word that does a lot of work uh, that people wanted to do uh, conceptually. Um, the idea that like <laughs> unity is like taking the rejects from each party, and we're gonna like have something that no one likes, and therefore it's gonna be a compromise is uh, absurd. The last time we had this kind of unity ticket was the Civil War, where you had Andrew Johnson from the Democrats and Lincoln from the Republicans. This was not something that ended well, uh, particularly nicely for both halves of the country. So that that's the way you see it is, like the way I saw it, I, I guess I haven't looked carefully at it. I haven't I either, to be fair. Yeah. The way I saw it is emphasizing centrists, which is- uh, How is Tulsi a centrist? Tulsi was involved? Yes, he's trying to push Tulsi and like Jesse Ventura or something. Oh. So, okay, okay, I don't know. I don't know the specifics. As a scientist, you also know centrism is not a coherent term in politics. No, but see, now you're like, uh, uh, what is it? Pleading to authority no, I'm and pleading my to, ego. <laughs> no, no, I'm pleading to how you approach data. If someone is saying the mean is accurate, that only mean, that, I mean, the mean could be anywhere. It's a function but, of what's around it. That yeah, mean it's true. I don't even know what uh, centrist is supposed to mean, exactly. but what, what it means to me, I, there's no idea a cent, centrist there's more of a center right or center left to me what that means is somebody who is um, a liberal or conservative but is um, open-minded and uh, empathetic to the other side joe biden had the crime bill Joe Biden voted for Republican Supreme Court justices. Joe Biden voted for a balanced budget. Joe Biden voted for Bush's war. He, and I'm sure probably I haven't looked this up, the Patriot Act. Yeah. Joe, if you want a centrist, yeah. you have Joe Biden. Yeah, okay. He's worked yeah. very well with the Republican. That argument could be made. Of course, they'll everybody will always uh, resist that argument. I, you, it's whatever, not, it's but, undeniable. In fact, yeah. during the campaign, some uh, um, uh, uh, activist started yelling at him at a town hall, not yelling, just saying, hey, we need open borders. Joe Biden says, I'm not for open borders. Go vote for Trump and literally turn his back on the man. And this is during the primaries where it would behoove you to try to appeal to the base. And of course, you can probably also make the argument that Donald Trump is center right, if not center left. <laughs> well, I mean, he's he's very uh, 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 unique as a personality. Right. But if you look at his record and his first of all, his rhetoric, you can say is not centrist at all. But in terms of how he governs, the budgeting, I mean, has been very moderate. It certainly hasn't been like draconian budget cuts. Uh, the Supreme Court, you could say, okay, he's hard right. Immigration, you could say in certain capacities, he's hard right. But in terms of pro-life, what has he done there? In terms of, you know, so it, it's in, in many other aspects, he's been very much this kind of Me Too uh, Republican. But certainly the rhetoric, it's very hard to make him the case that he's a centrist. So you don't like, uh, is there any other idea you find compelling? Like you, what I like about Unity 2020, is this an idea for uh, a different way, for like a different party, a different path forward? So I mean, ideas, I, just like anarchy, is an interesting idea that, that leads to discourse, that leads to- I don't think it's interesting at all. And here's why I don't think it's interesting. Uh, Sweden has eight parties in its parliament. Iceland population is like 150,000. They've got nine, I think it was. Czech Republic has nine, Britain has five. Um, so the claim that two uh, parties is 
the uh, censorious of speech. But three, oh, now all of a sudden it, it makes no sense. Doesn't point to the data. Number one, number two is Donald Trump demonstrated that you can be basically a third party candidate, seize the machinery of a uh, existing party and appropriate to your own ends as Bernie Sanders Bernie almost Sanders, did. Bernie yeah. Sanders has never been a Democrat. Uh, yeah. Major credit to him for, for, that's not easy to be elected as Sanders and independent. He's done it repeatedly. So these are two examples of ossified elites uh, right for the picking. So to have a third party makes uh, um, no real sense.